Hey there, I'm Ryan. I'm Will. I'm Ivan. And tonight, we debrief the great final of Survivor UK on the podcast where we watch reality TV, so you don't have to. Welcome to episode 25 of It's Just a Game. Hello and welcome to episode 25 of It's Just a Game, the podcast where we watch reality TV so you don't have to. Almost every week we're here to watch reality TV. Not last week. I'm sure you missed us. Yes, we were gone, away, disappeared, able, missing. Why, you may ask. Busy failing my driving test, so <laughs> I was gone. I was going to guess that you were practicing the word watch because your, your pronunciation of watch is getting way better. I want a super cut from someone who listens to this podcast of all the watches from one to 25. It'll go watch, 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 watch. It turned into watch at one point. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. It's not watch anymore. It is watch. And I'm so proud of you, Ryan. And that week off has been great for your watch pronunciation. Well, it's all I've been doing for the past week, you know, during my driving test. That's why I failed. I kept saying, watch, watch, watch. The user is like, watch the road! You're like, what does that mean? But look, no, we're here almost every week to look at the best strategies, the winning plays, and the sorest losers of your favourite reality TV shows. This week, we're back for our last instalment on Survivor UK. And we've got to have a lot to say because we'll be covering episodes 13, 14, 15, and 16. But I couldn't do this on my own. Every week I'm joined by the boys. Wilf is here with us. Hello, Wilf. How are you? I'm all right. Uh, you sound really sexy with a cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I do have a cold. Please send any medication. So, Ivan, how have you been, Ivan? <laughs> <laughs> so I was drinking water. Um... <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Ryan, I don't want you to ask because the, my real friend has already asked me how I am. Thanks, Will. <laughs> so anyway, we don't care about that, but be one. We're entering a spot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Ivan. I'm good. I'm in Granada. There's a big palace to my left. I hope you can see it on the audio medium. It's been a, a wonderful two months in Spain, but I am driving back to the UK in time for Christmas, just like the Chris Rea song predicted all those years ago. And it's, yeah, I'm feeling a bit melancholy about it. I have to say the sun is setting on my time in the Iberian Peninsula. Lots of very long, very big words today from Ivan. Anyway, as always, be warned, we are entering a spoiler zone. So if you haven't seen all of Survivor UK and you do not want to be spoiled, well, you're a bit late for that, to be honest. If you have seen it, stay right here. If you haven't seen it, sucks to be you because Ivan's about to spoil it all on his recurring segment. What's been going on, Ivan? Well, you've asked me an impossible thing here because I've got to get four hours of TV into a segment that's not going to bore people. So I'm going to do this super fast. Are you ready? Episode 13. Nathan questions Matthew on his blind side of Tanuke. Once again, the team want to get rid of Chris. There's a lobster creel containing a nudity idol. Chris and Matthew find the key, but Matthew leaves the idol in the creel to convince others it's still in play and forgets to close the latch. Fool! The immunity challenge is a don't drip domino run and Christopher goes and bloody wins immunity. So, everyone's got to go for someone different. They're going for Nathan. Until he comes across the unlock trap and just takes it. Chris is rightly furious, Matthew's in the firing line, and he makes it worse by suggesting the other five then split the vote with Nathan and one of the other five just suggests they all vote out one of the people in the conversation. Matthew, no. We're all thinking Matthew's going, but at the council we see Nathan, about to open his idol and not seeming to protect his remaining alliance with Leilani, comes across very overconfident. In the end, it's Lawrence who goes home in what must have been the popularity vote, but we never really saw that strategy. Right, episode 14. The remaining six players are split into pairs. Chris and Matthew, Nathan Leilani, Pegleg and Hannah. The reward task is a mud bath body bucket transport, which must be a sex thing for somebody. Chris wins again. He picks swing votes Hannah and Leg to go to a spa, hoping to win them over. They have a lovely bath, but they're not convinced. Everyone needs the idol. The immunity challenge is a key fetch into a hanging puzzle. Joel does his signature wade. Hooray! Pegleg, whose name can be factorised into PL, open brackets, EG, close brackets, wins immunity, which means it's Nathan versus Christopher to go. The swing votes go with Team Crathew, and Nathan is voted off 4-2. to two. Nathan's gone! Episode 15. The gang get video calls from home. Leilani gets 15 minutes. Chris gets one. The group start thinking who might beat them at the final jury, and which of the remaining players would vote for them at the jury. So everyone's considering who they want in the final. The immunity is a bagatelle and not pinball, not pinball, bagatelle puzzle. Chris wins again and rips off his own trousers. Peg and Chris talk about going for Leilani. Just think 
thinking about how he ripped off his trousers during the wrong challenge, really, didn't he? The other three are thinking peg leg. Everyone goes peg leg because he's just too appealing to the jury. And then there were four. Final episode. Leilani thinks Hannah might be her only competition and says as much to Matty in the most condescending way possible, Leilani. The immunity challenge, ham acted by Chris, is touch the idol while standing on pegs. Not peg legs, but pegs. Chris pisses himself at the two hour mark. <laughs> at five hours, they ask Chris and Leilani to lift a leg because they've just run out of time and they clearly need to start the next segment of the television programme. And that eventually knocks out Leilani, who falls away. Challenge Beast Chris wins immunity again in the council. Likeable Hannah is voted out by the other three, leaving Matt, Leilani, and Chris. They have breakfast. And then they go to the jury. In a heated round of questions, it becomes clear that Chris was evil, Matthew was a puppet, and Leilani did nothing. But the eventual winner is Matthew, deemed worthy by a landslide. And that, my friends, is the entire series of Survivor UK done. We really do watch reality TV, so you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, but look, let, let's, let's get right into this. And first of all, we need to chat about the elephant in the room. And by elephant, I mean Ivan uh, in the room. I mean the podcast. Because Ivan, you won. You got it. You got it right. You bet at the beginning of the series that Matthew would win. And nobody believed you because the man is an NPC. He was probably the least... If you'd asked me who'd win, I would have told you. Like anyone but him. But I've told you Richard. He went out in the first episode. But not Machi, and yet Machi won. Well done. Let me tell you my. Let me tell you why I feel this because it came out. We hadn't mentioned Matthew that entire episode, and then you were like, "Who's going to win?" And I said, "Matt." And I believe one of the two of you just like literally laughed, as in like, "Is he even in the show?" I'll tell you why I picked him at the time. Twenty-one year old or whatever he is, young kid, cheeky smiley face, gets on with everyone. He'll get in an alliance, but he won't lead the alliance. That happened. What we didn't expect was he'd turn on everybody. But it was Chris's fault. So he goes kind of, even with the big move that got into the final, he just slid through. NPC is the word. He should have gone home. We all agree he should have gone home with the idol problem, but he didn't and he survived. I don't think he's a worthy winner, but he won by a landslide. 5-1-1. One, one. Okay, we'll get to the winner in a second of whether he's a worthy winner, because I know we're going to have opinions there about the final, but let's take it from the top. Let's go back to episode 13. And episode 13 is sort of the, the fallout, the fallout of Tinuki's elimination. Lawrence is going sort of like, oh, I've pulled the strings, but nobody's going to catch me. It all seems to be going well. And then we see um, some surprising eliminations, you know, four eliminations in a row that quite surprised me. See, in episode 13, we get rid of Lawrence, uh, who finally started the episode being like, yeah, I'm fine. Nobody's going to catch me. I ran, I ran this whole strategy. And nobody knows. And to be fair, he did have a point. Nobody was really onto him. We're not entirely sure why Lawrence went. In the next episode, you've got Nathan as well, who was actually a strong character. And actually, like, okay, Nathan didn't play very well in some of the challenges, I'll say. But I race him. He went up with his hell up high. He went up playing strong and ethical game, a beautiful game. I rate this and I was really gutsed he went. But I think he did himself wrong in when he got the immunity. It was the way he was so cocky about it. And I think he dug his own grave a little bit there. If he stayed true to who the real Nathan was through the rest of the show, I think he possibly could have saved himself a little bit. I think it really caught Hannah off guard because Hannah was like, who is this guy? Like, why is he acting like this? And Hannah, we thought, I thought they were quite a strong alliance. And she was instrumental in sort of that decision as well of him going, I think. I don't think it was to do with the, the switch of uh, his, his weird, arrogant half hour. So Tanuko was a headhunt and Nathan was a headhunt. Lawrence was also bringing down the numbers of that majority Calaton alliance. They didn't take Leilani out because by that point they were no longer a majority. I do believe Nathan was just them mopping it up. I think that was very clearly what they were trying to do. Nevertheless, nobody respected him as much as they had after he did that weird, arrogant bit. He was just trying to be fun. It just didn't come across as fun. I don't think he was being arrogant. He was just having fun playing the game in a really fun way. Because for once, he held all the cards, knowing damn well he was on his way out no matter what. And can we, can we just jump back to Lawrence really quickly? I feel like a lot of times in this show, we've been given an outcome and not really had any build up to what why that outcome has happened and i think it's happened three times now with people being voted out where we're not seeing the the strategy behind it so it's hard for us to really comment on why we think lawrence went i don't really understand why he did go because he he didn't seem like people sussed him out or anything like that do you think he was a bit of a scapegoat vote i don't know 
what I said in my recap was what must have been a popularity vote. I, I got that too. We didn't see any strategy. We just saw them get him. It must have not made the edit. It must have just been like, who are we going for? Lawrence? Lawrence. Okay, Lawrence, Lawrence. Yeah, it's a shame because I want, I want to see that happen. I want to see that more than most of the other content they provide us on those episodes. Even if they show us after, because we love to watch a blind side, right? But the best thing, even if they go back to the beginning of them conversations, it will give us some kind of context of how they come up with that decision. So it was a bit strange with Lawrence. It caught me off guard. And I, I liked Lawrence. We'll talk about the final episode where I think the best of Lawrence came out. But I, I didn't mind Lawrence. He weren't my favourite. He weren't my least favourite. He was just sort of somebody I, I enjoyed watching because I think he was really articulate. And I liked the way he phrased things. I found him fairly unlikable, not least because when he left, he said that he left with his integrity, his head up high. And I was like, no, you didn't. So you tried to, you tried to save yourself by voting for peg leg in the previous elimination, but you didn't fool anyone in that you were responsible for Tanuki's elimination. In fact, you were too cowardly to go out and vote for your friend. You tried to like absorb, clean your hands by just going, yeah, I'm going to vote for peg leg. So no, you're not leaving with any integrity left. I, th I think he played a strategy that he thought would work. I think he definitely should be counted amongst one of the really intelligent players. Him, Doug, Ren, Bellani, like people who really played it very intelligently. He certainly had his head like, on, in the game the whole time. He knew what he was doing. And that kind of flipping from side to side solved him, like served him well. He got to the final seven. I think he's really smart, but maybe his hubris caught him a little bit towards the end. I think it's a risk, though, um, showing your intellect because we don't know what they could have been having loads of random intellectual conversations and people are threatened by that i remember being threatened by ivan so much you could tell because you were talking very articulate when we was in the traitor so for me it was like that scares people so that could have been a factor of do you know what he's probably playing it better than what we think he's very intelligent he knows what he's doing where ryan's very intelligent but played it quite naively and didn't act as intelligent as what he actually is so he lasted longer because of that. That's what I think anyway. There's literally someone in every single series that we see who forgets to keep a lid on their kind of strategy head. Like we've seen it with Annabelle in this Australian series. We've seen it with me in, in the UK series. We saw it with Ren in this series. Like people who just don't remember, calm it. I'm telling myself this in the past because I oh, I think so many times about what I could have done differently. If you're listening to this, it's going to be on a reality TV show and you think I'm the strategy head. Just be quiet for a bit. When I left the traitor, somebody told me, oh, you should have told everyone you were a lawyer. We'd have trusted you. Absolutely not. If I told anyone I was a lawyer, I was gone, they you. If you told everyone you a lawyer, everybody would look at you for the advice and you'd be the scapegoat if, if, if you were wrong as well. Yeah. Of course. Like, there's a reason why I'm the longest lasting lawyer on English speaking traitors. Because everyone else says they're a lawyer when they come in and they get booted out 25 seconds in. Yeah, MK was gone, wasn't he, from the Australian one? MK was gone. Uh, Angelica was gone. Just like, no, no. If you're smart, hide it. Uh, and perhaps Lawrence failed to do that a little bit too much. He was in a bad play. I just think maybe his ego got him towards the end. You get so intimidated by intellectual, because I find out I'm a clever person, but there's a level to cleverness in life. <laughs> like, I don't even know if cleverness is a word. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, some of us like to go for the word intelligence, but you know, cleverness will do. <laughs> At the end of the day, I agree with you guys here, which is that there was something missing from the edit once again. We were missing an explanation. I think the editors got uh, crystal vision and they just showed a lot of Christopher and they forgot that maybe it was to the detriment of other storylines that would have provided an explanation to what was going on in the game. I think the editors have a question, which is you've got 16 episodes and you cannot keep on doing the same narrative towards the end, which is we're going to do a blind side that we're not going to show you. If they went with the genius edit of like, after the elimination, roll back two hours and watch it happen. That's fine. But that will be the same every time as well. The other option is to sometimes just fully show you the move, which they do, but they can't do that every time. So they, they have got a difficult thing. Now, obviously there's been 45 seasons of Survivor in America and they've got, they do something with that. And yeah, what it, what it is, is you just sometimes see the blind side and you sometimes don't. But when you don't, it doesn't feel right. So they've got to find a way to make it feel different every episode when actually blind sides are very similar a lot of the time. It's quite rare that the blind side is like, I've never seen that before. So, and, and when there was, we saw them. So it must have just been they were like, we can't just show another thing of people agreeing behind someone's back to vote for them. Yeah, I get that. But can they show some conversation, like really brief conversations beforehand? And then, you know, when they write down the person's name and they have their little speech, they could do a blind side in that way. So they could say, Sorry, this is why I'm voting for you. Bit of a blind side, blah, blah, blah. Because that, that 
then surprises us at the same time. Yeah, you could have you could have master interviews, you know, confessionals to make that more clear to explain it. I feel like the edit this year wasn't perfect. There were mistakes in the edit. For starters, whoever's in charge of the music should be fired. And I don't mean from their job. I mean they should be fired into the sun. Like send them to Spain, fire them from a cannon. Do you know what? I'm I'm gonna go against you in terms of some of it. Like I didn't like the covers. The covers that were very traitor-esque, right? That wasn't I just don't think it worked. There were certain bits of music before Tribal Council and stuff, little tiny like intros and stuff that were quite nice actually. Okay, so I'll agree with you partly. Basically, there were two styles of music. There was very Survivor style. And I can tell from the credits, they borrowed a lot of the Survivor style songs from the French version, from the French composers. You've got a whole range of music for that show. And then sometimes you just have a random cover of Britney Spears. This doesn't work together. They tried to do something a bit traitor-esque. And that's just not the right environment. It works on traitors. So traitors is like, at its heart, quite a fun show, quite elegant, quite camp. Well, Survivor just really isn't. It didn't work. I found them using jarring. I feel like this needs major fix before Series 2. I agree with you. But I think what they were trying to avoid would have been worse, which is cultural appropriation, right? So if you go, let's have tribal music, you get a problem because it's like, you know, boom, 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 boom. And you're like, well, what is that? Is that, a, is that African? Are we in, we're in the Caribbean. So like, you've got to be really careful what you do when you want to go, let's go tribal. So clearly they were trying to avoid that. And for that, I do applaud them. But it's not one or the other. They needed a tonal consistency, which they never got. We should just get Hans Zimmer. Get Hans Zimmer to do next season. It's the BBC. They can, uh, they can afford at least, like, you know, a 10 second preview from Henson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Travel Council's really short because they only have 10 seconds of music. Hello, welcome to Travel Council. Let's vote. Okay, Christopher, you're out. See you can later. we just loop the same 10 seconds from Hans Zimmer, please? <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about the first two eliminations, then let's move on to episodes 15 and 16, the semi-final and the final, because disappointing elimination at first. Two strong players I really would have wanted to see go towards the end. Pegleg, Hanago. Before we chat about the elimination, I want to ask you, congratulations, you've made it to the final five. There's five of you, Matthew, Christopher, Leilani, Hannah, and Pegleg. Imagine you're in Survivor. You're not actually in Survivor, I'm sorry. We're in the final five. You have to pick your final three. You have to take three people to the final. Who do you take? Three people to take. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's, let's say you're playing it. Let's say you're playing it. So you have to take two people and you in the final among Matthew, Christopher, Leilani, Hannah, and Pegleg. I would have taken Christopher and Matthew. It's a really hard question. Christopher, I'd definitely take there because pe- he pissed off so many people in the jury. So it's an obvious one for me. He was only going to get a vote from Ashley. But it really depends what game you was playing, though. It really depends who you are in that five. Does that make sense? Hannah would have won if Hannah got there, I think. Well, pick a game, pick a player you are, and then pick the two you want to take. So if I was Hannah, I would have taken Christopher and Leilani. For me, whoever I am, I'm taking Leilani and Chris, but I'm doing so with crossed fingers because if it's a really intelligent jury, they're going to look at Chris, as many of us viewers did, and go, don't like him. You've got to respect him. In the end, the jury didn't do that. I don't know if that's the right thing. I think he probably did deserve to win. But if I'm thinking about the final five, I'm thinking about the enemies he's made. And therefore, I'm thinking I'd bring him because he's disliked and Leilani because there's not enough reason to give her the win. Peg and Hannah, I know why they knocked them out. They're both so bloody likeable. I would vote for them if there's no one else to vote for just because they're nice. And that's enough to scare me at that point. And that's why they went. The thing is with Chris, though, I felt sorry for him in that in that little part, just for the fact of he didn't get the respect that he deserved for the game he did play. Like, And realistically, it's not all luck. luck. It's not. You can't get that far and go through so much shit and piss everybody off and still get that far. He smashed the challenges and I think he played a good game in the end. I, I think he deserved to win, to be fair, but we'll go on to that later. If we have to pick, I'm thinking you are correct. You can't take peg leg because you will win 100%. You can't take Hannah because she's probably going to win. So yeah, I'm taking Leilani because if I'm up against Leilani and I love her and I actually think she was, in my opinion, the person I would have liked to see win. But like, if you take her, you probably have got the best chance of making the case that she was coasting and that's how you can defend yourself against her. And Christopher, because yeah, Christopher just pissed off too many people. He was never going to win this. And I think everyone recognised him. And that's what actually got him to the final at that point. Because everyone knew there's no reason to get rid of Christopher so close to the end. Because he will not win. He's gone from liability to great assets. Somebody you want to keep. 
Yeah, you're right. You're both right. The reason why Krista did get to the final in the end was partially skill, partially the number of challenges he won, but a huge amount because nobody considered him a threat the entire way through. And in a way, we have to try and divide those things. How much was luck? How much was that he was discounted? And how much was pure skill? And even within that pure skill part, how much was challenge beast ability, which no one can doubt, he won more challenges than anyone else or got more rewards than anyone else. And then how much was strategy? There was some strategy. There was some challenge winning. And there was a huge dose of, I want this guy in the final because everyone hates him. But that's a strategy. It worked. It got him to the final three. It got me a huge amount of TV time. So it kind of worked. Yeah. I don't know if I can credit him with good strategy, you know, when... Every time he's good in challenges, you got to give him that. He was like, really good, but every time he made it one step further, it was because it was by accident. Really, he just stumbled into the final. Numbers don't lie. Top three. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I fully agree with that. Let's get to it. Then the final three, three people left in the final. They'll pick to this. You've got out. Sorry, bad news. But you are in the jury. You get to decide. Three people in front of you: Matthew, Christopher. And Leilani, who do you single-handedly give £100,000 to, according to Hannah? I think it was actually Tanuke. Tanuke, yeah, that. according to Tanuke, which is quite funny as well, because she didn't vote for the one person who got the money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Wilf. I would vote for Matthew. I think it was the right choice. He did play it well. Realistically, in these kind of games, you need to stay mediocre. You can't be too strong. You can't be too weak. I think and he, he did make some good moves. I do think Chris had a lot to do with that as well. Him and Chris's little alliance, I think, was quite quite strong towards the end. And then we well, got them both to the final, right? But, yeah, Matthew, I would have definitely given it to. I would have said to Leilani, well done. You've done really well. You've coasted a little bit. And then Christopher, I would applaud him for all of the gameplay and the games and the challenges. But in terms of who I wanted to see win out of them three was Matthew. The good news as well is that you can just help yourself to his money because he's put it in a safe, but he forgot to lock it <laughs> and then so you just go walk in and help yourself. There's a hundred grand just sitting on the dinner table. He's locked the padlock, but the padlock's next to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ivan, last three, who are you voting for? From a viewing perspective, mainly because I picked him in episode one, I was supporting Matthew. I think it depends on the final speech they give. And that's going to lead me to my recurring segment I'll ask you about in a second. I think if I, as a viewer, despite not enjoying watching him. I think probably the person most deserving of the win was Chris. However, there were a few things we saw Matt do that maybe he wasn't given enough credit for. And one, obviously we talked about the blind side, but the other was then from then until the end, riding Chris's coattails, not riding Chris's coattails, but riding side by side with Chris to the final, knowing that Chris wasn't very likable and therefore that's the guy you want in your alliance. Someone who's can get there, he can work, but he's not very likable. That's who you want in the final. He even said it in a confessional. If you listen carefully, he's like, I'm riding Chris all the way to the end because that's the person I want in the final. But everyone said that. But it's what he did. He was the only one allied with Chris in the final six. Well, they all did by not voting me out. They didn't ally with him. They just ignored him. Look, I, I think I think if you watch it back, it's very clear that Chris and Matthew were in an alliance, a two-person alliance together for quite a few episodes. Watch it back and see. And I think that's cleverer than we're giving Matthew credit for. Yes, he gave off NPC energy. Yes, he deserved to go home with, a, with the idol thing. That was unforgivable. Nevertheless, I was supporting him. But if I'm on the jury, I give the win to Chris. I'm going to be controversial then. We're going to have a range of opinions. I'm going to give the win to Leilani sort of by default. I quit the podcast. Thank you for coming. Uh, goodbye. Go away. N no Christopher apologists on this podcast. It's sort of by default. I can't for Christopher because he was good in the challenges and I'll give him that. He was really good in the challenges, but I found him gracing from the beginning to end. I found him actually not that good at strategy. A lot of it was just stumbling into places by pure luck, just because it wasn't his tie, because he was so bad that people weren't seeing him as a target. He was never going to win. I couldn't vote for Chris. Matthew, I just don't think he played that good a game. I think he sort of stumbled into the final as well. Uh, it's just like... He wasn't particularly active anyway. He wasn't particularly remarkable in the challenges. I didn't really notice him until quite late in the game. It's just the one challenge he did, he wasn't even responsible for. He was just, it was just Lawrence pulling every string and he was basically just the puppet in there. 
And I guess Leilani, she coasted as well, but at least she knows how to lock a padlock. And just for that, she deserves to, to go a bit further there. Actually, I think it was the first trio. It was a vote by default. Of all the final five, I would have voted for Hannah or Pegleg before any of the other three. So it was a bit of a disappointed vote for me. But I can't give the win to Matthew or to Christopher on that occasion. I just do not think that the game deserves it. I just, I, I wish that the jury would be more responsive to revealing your hand at the end and saying, this is what I did. And, and actually this brings me to my new recurring segment, which is do the final speech, right? Each of you pick a player. I'll take whoever you don't pick and give me the perfect final speech to convince the jury to vote for you. Because I think if you really want them to win, you frame everything you've done for the last month and say, this is why I'm a deserved winner. And I think some of them did this a little bit. I think Chris did better than the other two, actually. Frame it. Okay, so I'm going to go to Will. Who do you want to pick? Who do you want to do the final speech for? Christopher. Oh, I had a good one for Chris. Give me, all right, well, you can both do it. So if you're Chris, then give me bullet points. What are you going to try and say to convince the jury to vote for you at this point? Well, first of all, I'd apologise for pissing everyone off. I'd say, look, I'm sorry for pissing everybody off. Um, I do my best in the challenges and in the rewards. I, I try to share it out as equally as possible and give everyone a chance to do it. Enjoy them rewards. It's a hard one, isn't it, to come off the off the cuff? It's it's hard. But then, speaking of off the cuff, he could say he needs the hundred grand to replace his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I have the other hundred grand so I can uh, go on ASOS and buy loads of leopard print shirts, please? What about you, mate? Well, how would you? What would you add to that, Ryan? Uh, I'm going to be Christopher, once a bubble in point. Okay, everybody, stay right here. You're voting for me, or I will piss myself again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll vote. Now, if I had to uh, give a serious one, I think probably the easiest speech to make was Matthew, because he could, even though he wasn't really responsible for strategy, he actually could easily like set himself up sell himself as being the guy at the center of strategies starting with the two key blind side and dog going and all of that these are really good moments in the adventure especially dog who's a game player and loved it and i think you can position yourself as a sort of like puppet master even if really you were the puppet i agree with matt you frame it to say nathan to nuke I'm sorry for what I did. This is a game. This is out. We're out last. And I knew in the end that if it was in the final three with you, you'd have beaten me. Even though it hurt, even though I felt awful about it, you have to admit that's what got me here. And then if I'm Matthew, then I pull the trump card. I say, I'm standing next to Chris, who my alliance with Chris got him here too. I like him just as much as the rest of you like him. And he's only here because I'm here. And that's why you should vote for me. And that might come across as arrogant. I'd work on the wording of that a bit. But I think by saying that, you're basically like, you're, you're appealing to those people who don't like Christopher very much. And you're also appealing to those who go, all right, well, like Tanuke, who had a sour face every week she was knocked out. You're trying to say to her, all right, you don't like me for what I did, but you have to respect me for what I did. He had the easiest speech to make, and he sort of did it, did it, to be fair. He did it right, which is why you know, I'm not a fan of the fact he's won, but before the speeches, I wouldn't have voted for him. But after the speeches, yeah, fair play. You know what? You did, Leilani also did a really good speech, but it was just harder for her to defend record because she just didn't have much of a record to show. She had a good life story, but her adventure itself wasn't that strong. Machi was there for that. He rose up. I don't think Melanie's speech was good at all, but I don't know what I'd say apart from appealing to the women and be like, look, I'm a woman. I've got this far. You all week one, week two thought I was weak. I've proven you wrong. I've survived. I've been strong. I haven't changed that much. So I haven't got weaker. I haven't, in fact, I've got stronger over the time. Played into the kind of thing about like, I've flourished under these circumstances. She kind of said that a bit. She said something about pressure turns me into something. What would you add to that? What, would, what else would you say if you were Leilani? I would have added, like, I've learned so much about myself and I don't know if I could necessarily have done and I've proven myself. That sounds like every exit myth, every exit confessional from every reality TV contestant ever. Maybe as Leilani you say, yeah, week one, week two, you all thought I was a goner. I'm still here and I could live another year on this island. I'm literally getting stronger every day. Give me the hundred grand and leave me here. Like, that would be quite a fun speech to give if you were her, I think. What do you reckon? Uh, you know what, I, that that would give me on our side. I'm not sure whether it'd be enough to make up for the record. But then again, none of the others had particularly strong records. So you just needed, I think she just needed the wow factor. She just needed to catch people. And I did expect her to get a few more votes than that. You know, it was 8-1-1. But yeah, Matthew defended his record the right way. I don't agree with his speech. I don't think it was accurate, but it doesn't need to be accurate there. It just needs to convince. 
It's a communications, it's a framing thing. By that point, it doesn't matter what you've done, it matters how you frame it to the jury. I was really disappointed in Tanuke's. She couldn't forget about it's a game and, and she seemed really sour about it. And that's the only reason she voted for Leilani was, was just because she didn't want to give it to Matthew because he, he was part of that thing. And the thing is, with these kind of game shows, you have to realise that, do you know what, fair enough, I'm out, they played a good strategy, that's it. Like, and be honoured to be part of the show itself anyway. Compared to Tanuke, the fact that Nathan got the it, like, it's just a game ethos and despite being voted out by Matthew, actually when I voted for him, fair play, Nathan. That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see more of that. And if more people voted for Chris, I think they would have got that too. And Doug was the same. He was happy when he got voted out. He was like, oh my God, what a blindside. I really liked Doug. He was my probably my favourite person through the whole show to watch and stuff. Yeah. I've got to defend Tanuka's record. Like, it looks worse because she's the only person to vote for Leilani. But I do think at the end of the day, yeah, if you're the master of the blind side, got me out. Obviously, I'm not going to vote for you. You know, like, I, will, I might respect the blind side, but obviously, I'm not going to give you 100k. Ryan, it's just a game, mate. It's just, it's a, it's just game. a game, bro. It's just Still a game, out, man. Ryan. I jag, I jag. I jag. <laughs> hey, Ryan, I do this little podcast. You probably haven't heard of it. It's called It's Just a Game. Oh, it's just a game. Is it the podcast where we watch Roxy TV so you don't have to? Welcome. Uh, which actually brings me on to the challenges. Let's talk about the challenges then, because some really interesting stuff again. Some of my favorite challenges of the Survivor Multiverse it wasn't a challenge, but the lobster trap on the beach. Quite funny. I mean, come on. Come on. Who forgets to log the cage? Like, come on. I wouldn't trust the man with 100K after that. I wouldn't even trust it with like my car keys. Chris wanted to say, you're a fucking idiot. You can see it in his face. If there were no cameras, he would have drowned him in the sea there and then. I was sure Matthew was gone. I was so sure. I was like, that's it. That's the end. Wills won the prediction game because only his players are left. I was absolutely sure of it. When he got away, he got free without a single vote. I was like, what are you guys playing at? That was a good, I love that though. So good. But then the other challenges, one of my favourites as well, a very common one on French Survivor, the dominoes on a moving beach like the dominoes i love them then we have uh, the mud challenge just grabbing all that mud once again amazing challenge the puzzle and one of my favorites it's quite reminiscent of how french survivor ends which is quite unique which is the last challenge of french survivor invariably for the past 20 series is always there's a pillar in the sea just stand on there last person standing on their pillar who hasn't fallen down wins and the pillar initially started with like 20 centimeters either side and it goes down to 15 and then it like reduces in size and people will stay on that pillar for five six hours and i love that this was really similar here it's slightly more complicated as well but i love that final challenge i actually think it's a great final challenge to have like forever like it's brilliant i loved it you want to build up a legacy challenge that like you do every year. It's a bit weirdly contrived with a sort of four point stand, but I loved how long it lasted. That made it feel epic. The fact that they've made it a bit easier so that you could make it last that long. Yes, yes, yes. It was so good. You know, when they're like, we're four hours into it. I was like, but I mean, what's George been doing? He's just standing there watching these two people. He must've been bored at times. It's like, you know, I've done an exam invigilation in my life, right? Where you, just walk around while kids do exams. That is boring. And that was what I thought about it. I was like, he must be just sitting, standing there like, oh, well, this is boring. <laughs> running, out, running out of things to comment, like, honestly. Do you think he commentated that whole thing? No, I mean, presumably, if it's the same as the same challenge on the French Survivor, what he does is you actually see him there the whole time. But basically, he goes away, just sits down under the shade, and every 15 minutes comes back to comments, and then the edit does the magic. What if Leilani falls off when he sat down having a poo? <laughs> that's, the, that's my worry. He comes back and then pretends that Leilani is just on a poo. Presumably, can you imagine the producers being like, um, sorry, can we get Joel back and say it? Christopher just pissed himself. Joel's got a dingleberry. He's just trying to like, he's like running around facing the camera, like, don't film behind me. No, but honestly, sorry, can we chat about this for a second? Like, Christopher pissed himself. Like, there is no amount of money that would convince me to piss myself on national television. For a hundred grand, bro, are you fucking taking a piss, bro? So he pissed himself for zero pounds because he didn't win anything. He pissed himself for free. Yeah, I know, but I would. If I was standing on the block... Oh, you pissed yourself for free? Okay, go on, piss yourself. No, but for immunity, if you're like, oh my God, this is going to get me to the final and I really need a piss, I am just going to piss myself. I rate it. I thought I was just like, fair enough. The producers of the traitors really missed a the trick there. They could have asked Will to piss himself at the final round table and have done it. I'm sorry, I, I don't understand because I, I feel like that would be a more common thing. In a long challenge like that, you've got to assume that like 
Either they tell you, by the way, this one's going to go long. Have a wee. Um, if they did that and he still pissed himself, then yeah, that's that's not very nice. But also, you know what it feels like. When you've got to go, you've got to go. And he must have realised that he was so uncomfortable in not four points, but five points, that doing a little wee would have helped him. And it did. He lasted for three more hours. I mean, he would have stunk, but he did last for that long. In the sun as well. Oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan. It's lucky he didn't piss on his shirt because he's, he would have to wear that for another couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> Probably make it look better, to be honest. Will, how, how, what on earth are you doing if you piss on your shirt? Is it, is it either a very highly powered jet or you're standing upside down? Will uh, cleans driveway with his wee. <laughs> or Will's got a hose that he tucks into his top pocket because it's so long. I don't understand what's going on. No, it's de- definitely not, man. Just faces upwards like that. That's right. It's only a public podcast, Will. You say what you want. It's okay. <laughs> well, there you have it. It's a fitting way to end the podcast with the revelation that Will piss himself for free. I, I don't think there's any better way to end. Why is pissing yourself for free such a common phrase here? Do we normally get paid for pissing ourselves? I've never been even offered money for pissing myself. Well, actually, I, I, I go to some interesting parties. I'll introduce you, Owen. Is that what you do at Soho House or whatever it's called? No, go on then. How much would you have you paid to piss yourself on national TV? How much would I do it for? I'd do it for 50 quid. 50 quid on national TV to piss yourself? Um, no, 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 not on national TV. If my mate was like, piss yourself, I'll give you 50 quid. I'm like, all right then. I'm about to give you 50 quid, Will. If you've said this now, I will absolutely give you 50 quid to piss yourself in your clothes because that is actually, like, that is worth the money. That's funny enough to me. But what happens if I get stage fright and I, a little dribble comes out? <laughs> well, next time I see you, just drink lots of water and bring a pair of pants. Oh, I don't think I could do it. They'd call you Colonel Piss Pants or something. Like, that's, you, you, like, you wouldn't live it down. Do you know what I mean? Pistoffer. Look, on that note, I leave you on that because honestly, it's the best joke I will have ever made on this podcast. Pistoffer. So I think, I think I just leave you on that. But that's all for the Brief for Survivor UK. I have my notes here. I write notes. You know, I write my synopses, but I also write like talking points. We've covered all of them apart from one thing, which I've just written a word down, which is underestimatement. And do you remember who said this? Because someone said underestimatement and I've forgotten who it was, but it's bloody brilliant. It was Matthew. He said a word and I was like, that's not a word. And I correct. And he said, is that a word? It sounds like something he'd say. Underestimatement was one of the best things I've ever heard in my life. And for that, he deserves to win. <laughs> Fair. Well, on that note, that's all debrief of Survivor UK. Now, we'll be back very soon to chat about a, a show that is close to our hearts, that there's a lot of things to say about. The Traitors UK is back on BBC One, 3rd of January, and we'll be back every week. We're going to be recording live from all around the world. The first episode, I'll be recording from Miami, the second one from Auckland and New Zealand, and the last one from Melbourne. Like, w- this podcast is about to travel no matter where I am, we're going to be here to discuss Traitors UK. Series 2 is going to be very exciting. It's going to be very new. And we're going to have a lot of opinions on that. So we'll be back very soon for that. Everyone excited? Yes. I can't not fucking wait. Can we all build the, the personality of one person who we think is going to be on the series, please? Name, occupation, and kind of like general vibe. Nurse. There's going to be a nurse, I think. Nurse. Always, yeah. I'm going to go Aisha, student. Goes our first episode. I think there's going to be a professional astrologer called Santorum. And they're like completely amazing, waist long white hair and properly think they can read everyone by like what date of the year they were born. And that's what they're going on. I think there's going to be a consultant that does part in gift at the end. No, I don't think they'll allow that again. They, they will shoot him down. Like, there'll be snipers at that round table. I think there's going to be a professional, a professional video gamer, like a streamer. That'd be a police person again. You think the middle of the police person? Yeah, hundred percent, like a detective or somebody. A detective that always like they will start with like massive statements about how like they're incredible at finding traitors and will not find a single one for ten weeks. I think there's going to be a dog. Just a dog, yeah. It's just a dog. On these predictions, we'll be back very soon to discuss the Traitors UK. If you like the podcast, you know the drill. Give us five stars. Give us a like. Send me some paracetamol. Do something. My name is Ryan Rashidi. You can follow me on Instagram at called and flu tablets. You, my name's Will. You can follow me at Traitors UK. Season two is coming out and I cannot wait. I'm Ivan. Don't follow me, but let's get hashtag Traitors Dog trending, please. (laughs) (laughs) And from all of us here, it's see you next year and goodbye. Bye. 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 B